Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much. I am going to uh, start with an overview of uh, the All Scene Alliance and uh, of All Join. Um, and um, as I go through the uh, talk, if anybody wants to interrupt, please do. I know you might not feel comfortable about it. Please do. Raise your hand. You just interrupt. Jump up. Um, let's make this interactive. Uh, otherwise, I'll just be talking and it won't be nearly as much fun. I'm going to um, talk through the Alliance, some of our members, the technology, and really talk to you about the problem that this solves because I, that's the part I think that's most important here. It's not the technology, you know, it's not the members, although they're both important and that's all we are is technology and members. But what's really important here is the problem we're solving. So let's start with... Uh, what the All Seen Alliance is. The All Seen Alliance is a consortium. It's a group of members. As of this morning, uh, Whitney is in the back, heads up PR for the Alliance, just made, put out our big announcement. Another 20 members, six months of continued double digit growth in the Alliance. Uh, 20 new members this morning, just really exciting. Uh, and if you look at the, 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 the range of members, it's everything from chip companies to product companies to service companies. It's really great, a wide range. Even a cabinet company, a company that makes cabinetry, has signed up as a member because they know that it's so important to be part of this um, that they really feel that it's fundamental to help build the the open source project and the open source framework that's at the heart of what we do. The second is it's a community, and this is a very inclusive community. I'm going to ask uh, who here is from a member company? Well, how many people are here from member companies? That's awesome. So for the member companies, it's very inclusive. It's a really great community. And from the non-member companies, come on in and participate because we, 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 we want you here. And the community is building all join. We're an open source project. That's all we are. It, it's really simple. We, we, we're, we're going to be wildly successful because of the members and through the members, and, and that's going to help the members and the community. And then finally, an open source software project. And I'll go through some of the technology there, but the open source software project is here and it's real today. And you'll see that throughout the presentation. Uh, the open source software is in use, it's in real products today. If you buy an LG TV, if you download Windows 10, if you buy a Panasonic speaker, they're all running the same all join that you can download today from the website. It's not a demonstration, it's not a sample, it's not a reference implementation, it's production code. And that's really important to me and to all of the members. Because what we're all trying to do is build this open source project that everybody can use because we know at the end of the day, if you're building connected products and connected applications, the protocol, the framework, the thing that we call all join isn't the important part. Your product is the important part. The, you have to have the framework and it's absolutely necessary, but you shouldn't be spending engineering doing that. You should be spending engineering making amazing products. Um, I think I skipped, I jumped over one there. Hang on a second. There we go. I'm fighting with it. So. The All Seen Alliance is the world's largest collaborative project for IoT. It's 170 members, 750,000 lines of member written code, and it's 10 million all join enabled products. And with the Microsoft announcements, we're rapidly heading towards a billion products. I want to be able to say that there are billions of products running all join. And we're getting there because Microsoft. It, it, it has put it in Windows 10. That means the size of the ecosystem grows. If you look at all the other member companies, it's going to be in stoves and refrigerators and TV sets and game consoles and applications and handsets, and that's just awesome. So who are the members? This is an eye test. If you can read this, you're doing good. Uh, come up to the booth. I'm glad to talk you through it. We have a lot of members now, and it's awesome. On top of the premier members, They've spent more money to help support this thing that they think is important. Our newest member uh, uh, on the board today is Canon. Uh, they were announced just a week or two ago. Um, the premier members, the community members, and the sponsored members work together towards this. Uh, and it's really great to see this number of members and the diversity of members. 
If you can think of an in interesting area uh, that you would want to connect from cabinets to cars, from chips to fully formed products, they're up here. Uh, I highlight just a little bit on the far end the sponsored members. This is an important part of our mission as a community. Um, you know, community members, premier members are paying members. They're paying to be part of this. Um, sponsored members are universities, and not-for-profits, and other associations. And one of the things we feel that's really important as a community is that we give them a way to connect in. So everybody from Beijing University to NREL, National Renewable Energy Lab, are members of the All Seen Alliance. And so as the members and non-members of the Alliance, if there's a university, if there's an organization that you think should become a member, introduce them to me. I'd love to get them involved. We, we, we love having that part of our community because they, they continue to help us grow. And as I mentioned, lots and lots of products. We have a showcase page uh, on the website. You can see real products that are in market today. And this is great. It's great to be able to go to Amazon, to go to an electronic shop and buy products that really have all join in them today, and to see the promise uh, of those products, and to know that there are more and more products coming with all join in it. So you say, what is this all join? You know, what problem does it solve? What, what is it helping me do? Um, how many of you have connected products? Do you have connected stuff? Yeah, a bunch of you. I'm sure a bunch of you do. What's the problem with that? I'll tell you what my problem is. I have two pages on my iPad of apps. And I have two pages of apps. Each app works with one product. Almost every one of those apps talks to a cloud. So to turn, off the, turn on and off the light bulb in my living room, I push a button on an app, it talks to Europe to run to a cloud service. The cloud service in Europe comes all the way back and talks to the light bulb in my living room in Boston. Three seconds after I push the on button, the light bulb comes on, right? Even worse, if I want the light bulb to work with the smart plug to work with the TV, I have to use another cloud service to make that work, right? This is, this is my picture for this. I have to use another cloud service. And by the way, I have to be an IT manager for my house, not the job I want. I don't want to be an IT manager for my house. I just want my house to work. I just want my office to work. And that's what all of the consumers that you talk to about this, that's what they want. They don't want technology. They want things that solve problems. And that's really what they're after. And so you know, this one app, one solution coming together, or even worse, you, you can have multiple things work together, but you only can buy them from one company. Now, if you're from a company, that's probably a good thing. But if you're a consumer, you want to choose the best products. And what we really want is the best product to solve our problems. So I want the best refrigerator that meets my needs. I want the best TV set that meets my needs. I want the best lighting solution that meets my needs. And I want to be able to integrate those together to solve my problems. And so that means that those products can't each speak their own language. What we want those products to do is work together speaking a common language. This is really where we got to at the beginning of the all join development. So that we need a common language for products by category and by company. And that was th that's the heart of what all join is. But there's a second piece of this. And this is my talk tomorrow. So I'm going to give you a little preemption on my talk tomorrow as well, which is, you know, most of us have smartphones. I don't. Most of you do. I, I, I have a smartphone. And the magic of the smartphone wasn't that it was a smartphone. The magic of the smartphone was that the smartphone exposed APIs that developers could use to create applications. What do those applications do? They solve problems, right? They, they, Facebook. I can use Facebook on my laptop. Facebook's far more interesting on a mobile device because I can check in, I can tell people where I am, I can take pictures, they all get integrated together. And that's using all of these APIs, right, that are in the phone. GPS, touch screen, camera, all bring them together to solve one problem, social connectivity, versus, I don't know, Waze or a map program, which solves a different problem, navigation, versus Yelp or something, which solves a different problem, finding somewhere to go and finding reviews of that. So with a mobile device, you know, a smart mobile device, we get all of these APIs that then let developers create solutions on top of them. So the question is, what if? What if you can do that for 
a house. All the things in your house. What if you can give all of the things in your house, or your factory, or your business, an API? Because that's really where the power starts to come. One, common language. But two, let's not only give them a common language, but give them a common API. Because when all of these things get a common API, instead of having a light bulb app, and a TV app, and a smart, you know, I have a rice cooker app. I have a smart connected rice cooker. I love it. Right? But it doesn't do anything with anything else. What I really like to do is have that connected so it knows when I'm leaving the office so that it starts up so that when I get home, I have fresh cooked rice, right? That'd be awesome for me. I'd like it to know my schedule so that it knows if I have a late meeting and it starts later. Well, I can only do that if I have an API and a common language. But on top of that, then I need an application. And I'm not going to depend on the manufacturer to give me an application that solves all of my problems, right? Manufacturer is going to give me a great product. They're going to give me an app with that product because they have to. But that's going to solve their problem for me. What I really want then is a whole app ecosystem, just like on our mobile devices, that creates solutions to lots of other interesting problems based on the APIs in my business and in my house. right? And that's really where the second piece of all join comes. So the first one, common language. The second one, a common API. Once I get there, then I really start to get to the promise of what the Internet of Things promises. What does it promise us? We think it promises us billions and billions of things that work together. But I want, what I really want is billions and billions of things that I can use in the way that I want to use them to solve the problems that I have. Is the refrigerator door open? Did I forget the garage door open at night again? Is something boiling over on the stove while I'm somewhere else in the house, right? Those are real problems. They're not complicated problems, but they're problems we all have. Did I forget something in the oven? You know, how many of you burnt something, right? Like, if the house could just tell you, hey, it's getting close to done, then, boy, that'd be awesome. So what are we building? We're building all join. All join is a shared code base that everybody who's building an all join enabled product uses. It's a common framework that lets you discover and communicate and interact between devices and apps. It provides a set of base services that provide core connectivity and core functions. And then above that, it provides higher level service frameworks that know semantics. Um, you know, just like uh, Tim Berners-Lee has proposed a semantic web where a, a web that's smarter than the web we have. All join is really a semantic framework for devices. And after the basic services, it provides an understanding of what is a refrigerator, what is a car, what is a lighting product that lets those products not only work together, but it lets us understand what those products are. And that's really valuable. And then on top of that, all join is a way to create interoperability beyond all join. So all join creates a local or proximal network among things. And then it provides a standard way for that local network to reach out to the internet and to reach out to other networks. And if you think about that second part of that, right, the I'll reach out to the internet is obvious, right? It's the internet of things. So it, 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 one part of it is the internet protocol of things in my house or in my business. And then there's the remote connectivity part. And we'll talk about that a little more. But also, interoperability with existing things. A little later on today, uh, Bryant from Panasonic is going to talk about EchoNet and all joint interoperability. It's going to be a really very fun talk because that's going to show about how we, we bridge different protocols together. And if you look on the uh, all Seen Alliance website, you'll see lots of work on interoperability. Interoperability with Z-Wave, interoperability with Zigbee, interoperability with EchoNet, interoperability with um, BACnet, which is a US standard for building automation. And that, that interoperability is necessary because the world is already full of connected stuff. We're in a hotel full of connected stuff. The hotel rooms here are full of connected stuff. We want to use that stuff. We don't want to say throw that away and replace it. And so AllJoin has really worked very hard to include a way to integrate that into the AllJoin framework. The really cool part about that is once you've done that integration, then you, still, you just have to use the AllJoin application layer 
to build applications. Because all of those other things now look like all joint things. And so you can really build on top of that. All join is a code base, and I keep coming back to this because I think it's really important. It's something the, the Alliance is really proud of. It's a real code base that works today. The stuff that you download off the website is the same stuff that's in Windows 10. It's the same stuff that's in LG TVs. It's the same stuff that's in Panasonic speakers. If you download it, you're getting the same production code that they're using. Um, All join provides some really core functions. Discoverability. Really important. How do I find all the things around me? Identity. How do I name and describe those things? Uh, control. Really important. How do I get to, the, to, to, to control those devices? Manageability. This is an area that's growing. Right? When you think about it, when you make and sell a product, what you really want to do for users is give them a way to provision that device up, but you want to help them. You want to manage that product and its upgrades, and you want to do that in an easy way. So all join is growing in that space. Interoperability, this is so important. We don't want islands, right? We don't want little stovepipes of technology. We want shared technology that we can all work with. Adaptability, you know, you, things are coming, things are going. People show up with their mobile device, people go away with their mobile device. Some devices are turned on, some devices are turned off. You buy a new device. You want that just to happen automatically. You don't want to have to have a user really working very hard at that. You want that to be dynamic. Uh, spanning, this is so important. All join is not tightly coupled to the transport layer. All join is a communications protocol. It doesn't care about the transport. And I'll show you some other pictures of that. But this is really important. Bluetooth, Bluetooth low energy, thread, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, power line, pick your protocol, even serial. All join doesn't care about the transport. All join will gladly work on any of those transports. What all join does is make them all look like one all join network. And so you can make engineering choices to pick the best protocol to solve your problem. You know, maybe you've got a mobile device talking to a small sensor and you want to use BTLE to do that. That's okay, you can still use all join in that communication. Maybe you, you, you want to use wired Ethernet because it's a TV and you want to get high bandwidth to it. No problem. It can talk to the Wi-Fi all join enabled device just fine. And so as long as the transports are bridged, then we get this really nice um, spanning of diverse transports as one all join network. Uh, exchanging information, very standardized ways to get information flowing. And then finally, and definitely not least, security. All join works really hard to provide end-to-end -end security, and it's interesting. All join was built on a premise that the transport, that the network level security is always compromised. It probably isn't, but you have to assume it is. And that means that all join has started with this idea that everything from sender to receiver is always secured at a message level. Every message in all join is secured. So if I go from a secure transport, Ethernet, to an insecure transport, Serial, it's OK. I don't have to worry about man in the middle attacks. I don't have to worry about those transport level communications, because the sender and the receiver are tightly coupled with encryption. And it's lightweight encryption. You can get all that encryption fit into 40K. You don't need a big, giant open SSL stack to make it work. It's a nice little ECC encryption algorithm, runs on small embedded devices, runs on big devices, and transports between them. But it's symmetric key. So I can really have nice transport level security that travels from sender to recipient across all of those networks. And that's super important inside of AllJoin, and it's all kind of magic. I mean, if you care about it, it's there. If you don't want to dig into it in any detail, you still get it for free. It's just part of the protocol. And it's really nice. It's growing. The community built it in the security 1.0 model that we have in products today. The release we just had, uh, which is 15.04, we named them by year and month, 15.04 just shipped. That begins the security 2.0 model. The security 2.0 model will finish out in 15.08, so in August of this year with the next release of AllJoin. The security 2.0 model will come out, and that adds more enterprise and corporate features to AllJoin. And what that does for us is it gives us a, a richer security model. It's still sender to receiver message level security, but we add in more grouping, we add in more extensibility, we add in the ability to connect up to external directory services in a more consistent way. 
And what that does for us is lets enterprise users, business users, industrial users, business users really capitalize on all join as a protocol to reach out not just in small home settings, but much bigger settings. And to that end of kind of enterprise and industrial and business, one of the things you'll see in a lot of the all join, uh, in a lot of the all join releases that have happened in the last two, maybe three, is that a lot of the features have been around performance. Not the performance of I have five or six devices in my house, but the performance of I have two, three, four hundred devices working together and I want them to work well on the local network and be more efficient and protocol efficient. So a lot of our release work, because AllJoin is very robust, has been around making AllJoin more efficient and more scalable. And then, like I said, extending the security model. And I've always put this at the end because I think it's probably the most impressive piece of the technology, but it's also one that just works. When you fire things up, they just work. Things are just encrypted. So, you know, we call it the proximal network, the local network. All join works on a local network. It takes a local network and turns it into a, a one view of all join. The proximal network is great. You know, a washing machine can send out a message that says that laundry is ready. A TV can put up that message for you, or a mobile app can play that message. That's important, right? If you're down here, the washing machine's up here, the wash is done, and you need to move the wash to the dryer, then what are you going to do? You want this to send a message to you down here on your mobile app, or maybe even better on a display that's in your kitchen, or somewhere else, maybe on a set of speakers, so that you get that message that tells you, hey, the laundry's ready. Not only that, this product might be from Panasonic. This product might be from Sony. You want them to work together. You just expect them to work together. I don't have to have a product to surf one web and a product to surf another web. I used to. CompuServe, Prodigy, Minitel, all these different web surfing products. In the same way, I want all these things to work together. And so this proximal local network is at the heart of all join. It lets all of these devices work. And even though it's IoT, this is local. And this is really another important piece of our model. We've just started with the idea that first you build the local network. Everything doesn't have to talk to the cloud. Everything doesn't have to reach out. Once you have the local network, you add in a bit of magic, the all join gateway service. And the all join gateway service, to put it in, I, I describe it more technically, the all join gateway service is a, a, a firewall and a router for all join. It takes the proximal local network of all join and gives it remote access or inter-networking capabilities, which is what a firewall is, right? Which is what a router is. And this is really great because it means that all of these devices working in here are nice and safe. They're behind my internet connection, right? They're all matted and behind me on their transports. And when I give the gateway, I create a single point of access out. And that just reduces the surface area. I don't have every light bulb, every light switch, every appliance in my house connecting to the internet directly. I have a nice managed connection out and that helps me as the consumer get a better feeling that the things inside of my house are more secure and it helps me as a product maker reduce the exposure that I give to a consumer. I can choose how I mediate their, their, their outbound experience. I can choose how much I expose of their connections to the outside world. So I'm going to take a moment there uh, before I get down into a little bit of architecture and see if anybody has questions on the alliance or the general ideas. Question. Uh, so let me confirm my understanding. So does, does all join gateway service connect to local network and internet? Yes. And, and I think of it more as local internet and other network. Mm -hmm. Because it could be local all join network and echo net and creating a bridge between those. It could be a local all join network and a BTLE device because it's bridging to a, a legacy BTLE device you have and you could, ha you could make it work that way. But it can also connect to a cloud service. And that's really powerful because now with a cloud service, imagine you've got an app and you're inside your house and you're talking to your, your, all of your products and that's a nice automation app and it's maybe a security system or maybe just a, a home automation system you've got on an app on, on your tablet. When you leave the house, you would normally then have to have a, pro, a, a connection to every device. 
right? Because this is working in locally. But with the gateway agent, it's like you have a VPN to your house because now I make a connection to the gateway agent and this app just thinks it's connected back to your house. You know, MQTT, XMPP, there are lots of ways to make that connection. HTTP with a long running connection. All you're doing is making a tunnel for all joined packets back to your house in a secure way. And as soon as you do that, that app just thinks it's back on the network which is really powerful. So from a remote access perspective, that's powerful. I'll also, I have a couple other slides in the architecture. I'll show you about the gateway. The gateway also um, can live in two models. It's been built in two models. One is a consumer model. And the consumer model is kind of my gateway, right? a personal gateway. And it might be in a Wi-Fi access point or something. And I can install connectors for external services. I can install connectors for local connectivity. But there's also a managed gateway. And this is one that would more come from a mobile operator or from an internet provider. That's uh, TR69 managed. And in that way, the, the operator or, or the provider can actually choose what gets plugged in and provide remote management capabilities at a gateway service. And that becomes very powerful if you're a provider. Because if you're a provider and, and you provide that capability, then you can help manage the connection for your user and you can provide a higher level of service and support for your user. And so we've built the gateway agent, the community has built the gateway agent in these two modes. And so you, you could imagine, you know, if you're an internet provider, that you might want to provide your user uh, with, with one of these nice managed services just to make it easier and stronger for them to get things done. And uh, I'll, I'll jump in, I'm gonna go right into the architecture. So I'm gonna start with a really ugly eye test and I'll come back to the, the gateway. So any, Transport, any OS, run on lots and lots of them. If there's a transport that doesn't work with all join, you're more than welcome to port it over. It really doesn't care about transport. IP, IPv6, it's happy to go. Even non-IP networks. So uh, there's a build of all join that runs over serial connections to allow you to connect to legacy serial devices. Um, the core operating, the, the core all join this is really the fundamental piece. This is the guts of the protocol. And it provides discovery and directory services. It provides the connection APIs, the core interface APIs, and this thing called events and actions. And events and actions are really, really cool. They're a relatively new, kind of maybe three builds old um, in, in the overall API. But if you think about any device, let's pick something simple, a refrigerator. A refrigerator might have a couple of events in it. Door is open, temperature is too high, temperature is too low. Three events. A refrigerator can then advertise, I have three events. Door is open, temperature too high, temperature too, too low. I, as a developer of an application, might go look for all the events and present them to a user. Say, hey user, what do you want to do with this refrigerator that you just found that has these three events? And I might say, if the door is open for more than 30 seconds, then play a message in the house to my, so that my kids will hear it on the speakers that says, close the refrigerator door, please. <laughs> That's an event triggering some kind of automation action. The other are actions. So in that same refrigerator, I might have something that's make temperature warmer and make temperature colder. Those are actions that I can do to the refrigerator. In my example of the rice cooker, it might be turn rice cooker on, turn rice cooker off. The, and on the rice cooker, the event might be job finished, right? Meal finished. And so events and actions are really powerful because they're standard interfaces that describe the things that you can do. What's the problem with these, though? Because this is a real problem. What if my refrigerator has set temperature and your refrigerator has temperature up and temperature down? Now my app has to know two different semantic meanings, and this is a problem. And this is where the semantic layer, this next layer up comes in, the service frameworks. These are shared understandings, shared semantic models of what things are. And this is really, the, you know, this is fundamentally really well done and very robust inside of AllJoin. It's been under development for five years. Now we're in the refinement of this. We're refining security. We're refining events and actions. We're making this more performant. But this is really strong. When we come up here to the service frameworks, this is where lots of innovation is happening. And you see we have the white ones and the yellow ones. The white ones are service frameworks that exist and are in, 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 available 
and fully developed. The yellow service frameworks are ones that are in development. These are the ones that are really coming to coming out now. So we have base services. These are services that every product that runs all join is probably going to use. Onboarding. How do I get a device onto Wi-Fi? Well, that's easy. If you have a computer or a tablet, you can tap away at the screen. What if you have a light bulb with no interface? How do you get it onto the Wi-Fi network? Onboarding provides those network on connection services. Notifications. These are device to human notifications. The laundry is ready. The light bulb is burnt out. You know, th those type of notifications. Control panel, just like it sounds, a way to create a remote interface for a device. And then finally, config, a way for me to configure the devices that I have. These are standard interfaces. We have two others under development right now, time service, kind of like NNTP for things. But also more than that, because if you think about time and devices, if you have, say, a stove or an air conditioner, you might want to program that, say, your air conditioner to turn on at a certain time, to turn off at a certain time. And so the time service is more than just NNTP. It's more than just syncing the time. It's also a way about pushing schedules and actions to a device. And location. This is another one where you say location. I get it. I'm here. Check in. But location is more than that. We're in the Cinzano Hotel. And in the Cinzano Hotel, we're in a conference room. And in this conference room, there are a certain number of devices. And some are on the ceiling. And some are on the walls. And some are mobile. Some of them are us. Location is about positioning all of the things we have in a context so that when you're building API applications on these, I can find the things that are around. If I come into the living room, maybe I have a Bluetooth beacon in the living room so I know I'm in the living room, I want to know what devices are there and how I can get to them. So we're working on a standard framework for location to be able to describe either automatically or manually where things are to provide context for them. Those are base services. Then we have these higher level service frameworks shared semantic meaning for, th for, for products. And the first one we created was the lighting service framework. What is smart lighting? You say, gee, th that sounds pretty easy. But if you think about it, you could have lots of ways to describe smart lighting, right? On, off, maybe one, zero. Maybe it's a, it, it's a power level. But then you have color temperature, and you have hue, and you have you know, power usage of the bulb. What the lighting service framework did was describe a standard mechanism for describing digital lighting. A community of members got together and defined a shared language for what a lighting product is and also for what collections of lighting products are, scenes, groups, etc. And that becomes the lighting service framework. Now, if you implement a light, you can create any interface you want. But when you put the lighting service framework on it, any app that knows what a lighting service framework light bulb is can now work with your light bulb. And so I have light bulbs from multiple manufacturers that all support the lighting service framework. I can put them together in scenes. I can turn them on and off together. I can change their colors and temperatures in, in a unified way. And in that way, I have the choice to pick the lighting fixture or the light bulb I want and get it all to work together with the lighting app I want. And those are all potentially from different companies. I mean, it may be from the same one, but it may also be from lots of different ones. In my house, I'm running some LifeX light bulbs. I'm running some OEM light bulbs. And I'm running a LumenCache lighting controller, which is a smart lighting controller. And those three different products all show up as lighting service framework enabled products, which is great, because now I have one app that I use to run all of them. Um, home appliance and entertainment framework is the next really big group we have. And this is great. If you look at the member list, my eye test originally, you'll see that probably half to two thirds of all of the appliances sold in the world are by companies that are members of the all Seen Alliance. All of those members compete viciously in the field. And you're a bunch of you in the room. So you, you all fight really tough in the marketplace. But all of those members have come together to say, look, it's not competitive for us to have different ways for our appliances to be described. We need a shared semantic framework for stove, refrigerator, air conditioner, air purifier, thermostat, all of the things th that are around us. Because that's not what we're going to compete at. That's kind of an old view of competition. We're going to compete on features and functions and quality. We're going to compete on what our device does, not on the language it speaks. And so in the home appliance and entertainment framework working group, you see all of these competitors coming together. And they're working like mad. They've had two, three face-to-face -face meetings all around the world. 
all of these competitors coming together, and they are on a rapid track. I would suspect by August, September, we're going to see the HAE framework in really out there in a way that you can start really using and putting into products, and that's awesome. Because then we have lighting and we have appliances, and that's most of the stuff around us. That's a big chunk of the stuff around us. We only have a few other things to go take care of after that. Um, home control, power, connected car are all other areas that are in development. These ones over here in incubation, connected car, and power, which I'd more call resource and energy management. So think about it. Once you have a light bulb or an appliance that is connected, the next thing you want to do with it is know how much energy, how much gas, how much water it's using. And then the next step after that is the real simple one. You want to make that device a little bit smarter. When I push the button on the dishwasher, maybe the dishwasher wants to talk to the infrastructure in the city, in, in the house, and say, is now a good time to run? Because maybe now is not a good time to run. Maybe I don't have enough hot water because I have solar hot water. Maybe the grid is really busy because it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon and everybody is home. And I'd really like to tell you that now is not a good time to run. I'm not going to not run. But I'm going to tell you that it's not a good time to run and that if you run a little later, it'll cost you less money because the energy company is going to give you a discount on energy if you run it at night. Or that you're going to use less water now later than now because of something else. And so this power and energy and resource piece of the, the, the effort is really can only happen when you get these other pieces happening. You can only do that when you have connected devices, but as soon as you have connected devices, this becomes a lot easier. And I know in Japan and in the States, uh, both big marketplaces that are really focused on this as part of the product, especially here in Japan with EchoNet and some of the ones, and Bryant, uh, again, from Panasonic is gonna talk about that. But you know, it's, it's mandated here in Japan, there's a few European countries where energy management is mandated. And in the States, we're rapidly heading towards that with water and energy. But also from a consumer perspective, what better thing for a consumer than to have an appliance that helps them save money and tells them how much it's saving, right? I don't want this appliance that doesn't run when I want, but I want to know that if I push the button now and I tell it, no, run now, it's going to cost me a dollar or you know, 100 more yen to run now than it will in three hours. I've also heard about really interesting things when you start putting these together. Like, I know I'm coming home at 5 o'clock at night. I want the dishwasher to run so that it's done at 5 o'clock at night because the dishwasher lets a lot of heat into the house right? as part of running. And so I want that moist heat coming into the house when I'm coming home at the end of work because that's a good thing for me. And oh, by the way, I serve dinner at 5.30 and the plates are still going to be warm, and so it serves as a plate warmer too, which is a great thing. And so you start to get these really richer scenarios that you wouldn't put in a product by default maybe, but all of a sudden you can do, and systems starting to work together also. Um, so core language, service frameworks that add semantic knowledge and, and more capabilities. The router, which is really a core piece, is how Aldrin talks. Aldrin creates a routed network, a mesh network, on top of whatever the physical topology is. So Ethernet points along a chain, you know, thread, full mesh networking. From an all-join perspective, that all gets blended together into a mesh of stars network, which is really powerful because you as the application developer don't have to think about the underlying transport and how do you get to things. As long as routing happens magically somewhere down at the physical level, then you're all, you're all set. And then finally, the gateway agent, which provides remote access, remote management, inner networking, and other capabilities. Um, just popping that picture over. This is broken into two real big builds of all join. When you go look at all join, we have really, the, 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 it, there's two major builds. There's the thin client and the standard client. The thin client is meant for embedded devices, think 40 to 60K kind of in dimension. It, 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 it's a C. It's really meant to run on real-time operating systems and on embedded devices. You can port that anywhere. And then finally, the standard client, which runs um, across richer OS is about 600K. The standard client comes by default with the router. You can turn it on or off. It's about 600K. And that's meant for running on high-level operating systems. And then uh, I'll come back down to this last picture, which is the mesh of stars. 
you know, Bluetooth Smart, Thread, Ethernet, Wi-Fi. If you're on an all join app and you point into this network, you just see it as all join. So you don't have to think about it. And I, I mentioned there are two main builds. There's also two main ways you use all join. You use all join on your device and you use all join on the app side. And when using all join on the app side, right, this to build apps to talk to all join enabled devices. Uh, we had a member contribution from Microsoft, um, which is really an awesome contribution. It uses Apache Cordoba. The Apache Cordoba build allows you to write to write an all join enabled app in Apache Cordoba and then have it appear magically on Android, iOS, Windows. Uh, Mac OS, Web OS, this is the magic of the Cordoba framework, the Apache Cordoba framework, is that you can write one app and have it live across multiple platforms. And that makes it super easy on the app development side to get going with all join enabled apps. And that's really the app framework that we're beginning to adopt more widely. We have lots of other language and platform bindings right now, but we're heading towards this Cordoba framework as the primary framework. And then we have a secondary framework known as AllJoin JS. It's AllJoin JavaScript, which is really neat. You can use that in a device or at the app level. AllJoin JS lets you use JavaScript to create the AllJoin functionality in your device. So if you don't want to hack hardcore C to make your device work, you can use AllJoin JS as the scripting language to create the AllJoin application that runs on your embedded device or in your application space. Um, so I'm going to actually just jump from there to um, r r right towards the end and just see if there, anybody has any other questions. Uh, I, yeah, actually, I'm going to, hey, go ahead. Um, in the previous video, yep. uh, in Wi-Fi, uh, you uh, described the mesh topology, but uh, in my understanding, a Wi-Fi is a start topology, which con uh, consists of the access point in the station. Absolutely. So. Wi-Fi network, from a physical perspective, it's a star, as is Ethernet or Powerline Ethernet, right? I have, I, I have IP and I talk to my devices and they each come, kind of come in and route around. But from an all-join application perspective, you don't have to think about that. You don't, all-join just, if I have two Wi-Fi devices, as long as the routers can find a path from one device to the other, then your device just says, hey, light bulb, turn on. It doesn't have to care. That one light bulb might be Bluetooth. Another light bulb might be power line. Third light bulb might be Wi-Fi from all join. As long as the routers can make the path through there at the all join protocol level, which depends on some physical routing, right? Then it doesn't care about the underlying topology. So from a developer perspective, it becomes easy because you don't have to think about stars and everything else. You just think, I send a message. If I'm on an all join network and I say, tell me about all the devices, the all join network just says, here's all the devices. If I say, tell me all the light bulbs, it's just going to give me a list of all light bulbs. It's not going to say, here's the three Bluetooth light bulbs and here's the two Wi-Fi light bulbs. It doesn't care. And so that makes it, in my perspective as a developer, that makes it a lot easier because you don't really have to think about that level, but you're right from an actual physical network perspective. As long as you're at CES, the nice people at Freescale did a great demonstration. They had uh, wired Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and Thread 802.15.4 devices. And they had a router running Linux that routed IP packets between those three protocols, right? Between those three transports. And then they had an all-join app. And the all-join app just saw that as one all-join network. And so as long as the routing you know, happens at that transport layer, from the a packet perspective, for all join, as long as that appears as one network, all join doesn't care. Which is really powerful in the house because then you make engineering choices, right? Which is what we all want to do. You want to say, this should be Bluetooth. This should be Ethernet because that's the right choice, not because, you are, you know, because your IoT protocol is limited to one transport. And we're even seeing manufacturers who make, um, I'll call them proprietary, but I don't mean that in a bad way, proprietary transports. So I'm thinking of Insteon, who makes home automation products, a big provider of home automation products. They have their own protocol, Insteon protocol, 
which is both a power line and a wireless protocol and it creates a big mesh network. They've now bridged that into all joins, so that appears as if it's an all join network, specifically because they want it easier for developers to build and they want their products being meshed into networks of other all join products. So rather than trying to build their own development environment, they want to become part of this ecosystem and they've done that. They've released that publicly. I, I have one of them, it's great. Any other questions? I'm timed out. Go ahead. I'm going to take two. <laughs> that the old joins almost completed to develop the software, but uh, uh, it's open source so that uh, are there any major future feature to develop in the open source community? Absolutely, and I need your help. <laughs> uh, Please let me know that what is the major feature to develop? So uh, I'm going to go back a couple of slides. Um, I think there's a... It, it, uh, I'm sorry, I jumped over my exuberance here. Here we go. Um, down here in the core level, we could use better support of IPv6. Uh, I, there's IPv6 support, but we could use better IPv6 support. That's uh, uh, if, if you're a kernel hacker type, this is the land of kernel hackers. If you're a low level kernel hacker type, we need good networking IPv6 support. Um, the router, is good, but I think if somebody really wanted to have a really good technical project, taking the router and shrinking it down and refactoring it. It's been through one refactoring in its life so far, so it's kind of V2 of the router. V3 of the router, I think this could be shrunk down and the performance of this increased greatly, but also add a little magic in there like easier connections to LDAP and Active Directory. Like you could do a lot of interesting things in the router, so that's a core level piece. Up at the higher level, service frameworks, fundamental. So a service framework for service, for telemetry data. We need one, a standard one for telemetry data. We need members and, and, and contributors in this power and energy management area. This is an area that's just forming and we need members there to turn that from incubation into a service framework, to turn that into a project and build software there. It's fundamental. And then in connected car. I think there's some interesting things in the connected car space that are really, demanding you know, some interaction. This isn't going to be the protocol that the engine talks to the gas pedal. This is going to be the protocol for entertainment devices and for you know, interesting kind of consumer side of this. So th those are areas where we could really use some participation from the community to grow this forward. On top of that, I'd say you know, if there's an area we're missing, device provisioning, user provisioning, et cetera, we're an open community, come in. Contribute to it, bring it forward, add it to another OS or another platform. They, they, there's lots of spaces, but the ones I named are the ones that I think as a community we need the most help with. I'm, I'm gonna give one more question if anybody has it. Otherwise, uh, I'm at your service to talk as needed. Anybody else? Okay, I'm here to, to talk. Let me know how I can help you. Uh, it's a great community. This is fundamentally important to creating a connected world. We, we, we need a language, we need a common shared framework. The fact that this is an open source project and an open community, it's easy to access and easy to use, is really why I'm here. I left industry to come run the All Seen Alliance to be part of the Linux Foundation to run this. And um, you know, we are the members. The, the, the members are what makes this strong. The members are what have created all of the, this capability. And the members are what are turning this into open products that work together to deliver to consumers what they really want, which is stuff that works together without an app per device. So I thank you very much for coming to attend. And I invite you to the rest of the sessions for today. We've got a great set of sessions for some really phenomenal speakers. Thank you.